What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Hey everyone, Dana Leslie back for another Disney Dining Review. We are headed back to 1900 Park Fair over at the Grand Floridian this evening for dinner this time. So if you're following along, we just ate breakfast there last week, the day after it opened, and we are going back to sample the dinner offerings. They don't do lunch here. So it's breakfast, it's kind of like Boma, they have breakfast or dinner. It's a little on the pricey side at $66 per adult. How much is a child? 41. $41. So we actually had a reservation for four and we were gonna bring the kids. We were and like, then no. we saw the price <laughs> and we're like, ah, oh, they can eat Totino's. <laughs> so it's just gonna be us again. Um, I don't know how much B-roll we'll get because they do. it's the same characters, it's the same wish ceremony thing. Um, I'm sure I'll get some of it, but I'm not sure. But the whole point is to go and see the food quality. Uh, we're going to see how the service, if it improves, if we still have to wait 20 minutes to get a table or if maybe they're moving a little bit faster. I'm looking forward to it. So if you haven't watched our breakfast review that came out a week prior to this, then definitely check that out if you're looking just at the general restaurant itself because there'll be a lot more information in that one as well. But I'm really excited about this food. My stomach is being very noisy right now. Now, I apologize if, if the microphone picked that up. I don't up. think the microphone can hear your stomach. <laughs> it's got uh, Tiana's gumbo. It's got peel and eat shrimp. We've got uh, mm -hmm. salmon. We've got um, the strawberry soup again. There's just, there's so many things on this menu. There's some impossible options. There's uh, some yummy looking desserts. I'm ready to try it all. I believe they have prime rib mm. on the carving station. At mm. least they did last week. I'm excited I about that. I think it's on the list, yeah. I really was impressed with the breakfast buffet selection here. Cause usually mm. you'll go and you see a big buffet, but like it's it's a mirror image of half of it. So like the same options on one half, it's just gonna be flip flopped on the other half. That's how a lot of Disney buffets yeah. are. This is not like that. This was, the entire buffet line was different selections the whole way down. I asked, I said, $66 sounds kind of expensive. How much is Chef Mickey's? Apparently it's $66. If this is the type of selection that 1900 Par for a breakfast was, this is, will be hands down better than eating at Chef Mickey's. Now, you don't get to meet Mickey, but these characters are fun too. And we yeah. got a lot of comments in the first video about how um, the characters didn't make sense. And honestly, that's the first thing I said too, but they're still fun. I mean, Tiana, with the opening of Tiana's Bayou Adventure and to tie in Tiana's gumbo in the menu, like that's that's fun, right? Yeah. And the whole thing about the characters is that the underlying like theme is making a wish and it's like having a wish and a, a dream and all of these characters have done that. So that I I can see the correlation. I get I get that people are not happy that the stepmother and stepsisters, you know, Anastasia and Drizella were fantastic. They were good. Uh, but, you know. I'm hungry. We didn't eat lunch. Are you ready to go eat? <laughs> yes. All right. Let's do this. Of course, so you have to hop on over down the bayou. Maybe yeah. we can cook something up real yeah. good together. 
together. When you come at the beginning of dinner, you meet characters real fast. It's Snow White tonight, not Aladdin. Cinderella, Snow White, Tiana, and Mirabelle. So Aladdin was really good for breakfast, breakfast the other day, so that's a little bit of a bummer. So we, we've already, we've been here, like, haven't even tasted anything. We've met three characters so far, but that's okay. Um, let's see, I got water and tea, sweet tea, and then I've got our appetizer course. So it's interesting, one half of the buffet is pretty much all appetizers. Uh, so it's like half and half, like appetizers on one side, so they've got everything from peel and eat shrimp to um, all kinds of salads. Like you can make your own Caesar salad, make your own uh, regular house salad. They've got homemade ranch. Um, the peel and eat shrimp actually looks really good, but they've got different like broccoli salads, kale salads, potato salads up there. And I got focaccia bread, so they have different breads and cheese selections over there. So I'm excited to try all of this. And I'm gonna go back up and get the main course and I'm really looking forward to that prime rib. I have pretty much got the appetizer plate as well, but I couldn't resist jumping over and grabbing a little bit of Tiana's gumbo with some jasmine rice um, in addition to my little appetizer plate. So I am excited. All four of my salads were fantastic. That potato salad was really, really good. The broccoli, actually the kale salad, ironically, was my favorite. And I'm not a huge kale fan. Unfortunately, the peel and eat shrimp was way overcooked. I agree with Dan on the shrimp. It was uh, it was overcooked. The focaccia was really tasty, and I did love all the salads that I got. Um, the gumbo was uh, pretty salty. Like, it's... Um, it, it was not my favorite. That is a healthy serving of prime rib. So, I mean, that is a solid three quarters of an inch thick with creamy horseradish sauce on top. I'm very excited about that. I didn't get the salmon because it, it felt a little dry or looked a little dry as Dan was getting it. So I'm very curious what he thinks about that. Um, the rest of it, I'm, I'm intrigued. Look at all those amazing glittering wishes. I wish my wish. We used to come for a week vacation and I would go back multiple times and force myself to just eat and eat and eat and I just can't do it anymore. Anyway, the prime rib was actually very good. It was cooked really, really well. It's cooked to mid-rare. Um, the horseradish sauce, great, and it paired excellently with the mashed potatoes, which were phenomenal. I will say that the food tasted much better than I thought it was going to. So the chicken looked very dry. It was delicious. The curry chicken, um, the glazed carrots were fantastic. The salmon, I tried, I stole a bite of Dan's, and it was actually much better than it, like, kind of appeared. So, I mean, overall, there were some things that were like, eh, like the mac and cheese was fine, it wasn't my favorite, but the, the um, prime rib was very, very well done, like well prepared. Dessert course. They have tons of desserts up there. Everything from brownies to cookies. The strawberry soup is back for dinner, so that's a breakfast and dinner thing. Just as good, maybe better honestly, uh, from the other day. Probably the star of the show is the mini warm chocolate little lava cakes that they have. They're just like two bites, but you can drizzle a warm vanilla sauce on them. Super, super good. I 100% agree. I mean, the, I love the strawberry soup. It's like, it's kind of, to me, it's a, it's more like a, like a melted strawberry ice cream, like a kind of looser strawberry shake or something. I don't know. It just, I just love it. It's so good. Um, and then that warm chocolate cake. Oh, if I had enough stomach space, I would get a whole little plate of, of those and just eat them all. But I am just going to enjoy my coffee and we are going to wrap this up at home. All right, we are back. Before we get into this review, if you would like help planning your next magical vacation, please reach out to us over at Fantastical Vacations. We plan Disney destinations, Universal Cruise Lines, and all-inclusive resorts. Some things got better, some things got worse. We're gonna get into that. Overall, this is a fantastic use of a dining plan credit mm -hmm. for $66 for an adult, Plus, you get a, an adult beverage if you partake mm -hmm. in those. This is a wonderful use of a dining plan credit. Let's talk ambiance. So, um, we were sat at another two top, which, um, once again, nice, big, spacious table. I really like big two tops um, rather than those teeny, tiny little ones. And then, but we were out like kind of in the middle of the, the um, kind of main section of dining. But it was not bad because it was, we weren't like super close to the people right next to us. Like we had space, it was comfortable. Yeah, I think, so like Grand Floridian Cafe on those banquettes, I feel really closed in and like, like I could just 
touch the people next to me. Where oh. this one, there were people sitting yeah. next to us, but I didn't feel too close. So I think I think it was nice. I'm pretty sure I could have tried the person's food next to me at Grand Floridian Cafe. Like just here's something to note: we did not have to park across the street in the cast member parking lot that they have converted half of to dining plan. We got there at like 5.15 p.m. So I'm wondering if they are starting to, especially in not hugely busy times, if you come for dinner for dining review, because when we did our koozies, that was dinner. But I, it must have yeah. something to do with the know. busyness of the of the resort. Um, Disney is not super busy right now, but then also the time of day because we couldn't have like left our car in the parking lot and gone over to Magic Kingdom. So actually we increased ambiance from a three and a half to a four because um, that is a better just overall guest experience. So appreciated that. So theming. Um, okay, I will say that, you know, I've been a travel agent for a very long time. I've told many a guest that uh, the characters could uh, change. Uh, they may not, but they're not a guaranteed like set characters. Um, this is the first time that it's ever happened to us. I was a little surprised, um, but there was no Aladdin. And instead of Aladdin, it was Snow White, um, which, you know, it's fine. It's, it is what it is. But I will say that the character interactions were not as um, like gun ho tonight as they were whenever we went for breakfast. All four of them were not as out, like I felt like they didn't have a script. They didn't know what to talk about. None of them were as like engaged. Like the the morning one, it felt just very natural, and they just they were all really really good. Um, these, I mean, they were still great character interactions. They just it, it felt a little more disjointed and not as. Flowy? The characters kind of make up the theming. Yeah. I do appreciate that. Like they have Tiana's gumbo and you can meet Tiana. Even that though. was fun. So we gave theming a four. All right, service. Service was for the most part, very good. They did improve their seating process. So we waited 20 minutes to get set at breakfast the other day, uh, two minutes. We checked in and we were set within two minutes. Now part of that may be the fact that we uh, got there relative, like on the earlier end of dinner seating, not, mm -hmm. not, it wasn't like, but honestly, it wasn't super crowded in there the say, entire time we were even eating. When we left. Our waitress, uh, she was fine. She was average. She didn't do anything above and beyond. She uh, definitely she brought it. She offered coffee at the end. She did clear plates. And then whenever we first got sat, like literally, we had just gotten sat, and it was like Mirabelle's turn to come to our table, and she just kind of skipped us. And I thought, oh no, we're. We may never see her again, but she came right back to us. Like as soon as our waitress was done with us talking, she like came right back over and met us before we went up and got food. All in all, uh, we thought service was quite good and we gave it a four. Food. Now I will say, and it probably is, has a lot to do with the fact that I, I just, I really like breakfast food. <laughs> so I would probably pick breakfast food over the dinner food here. However, that's not to say that everything wasn't fantastic. Well, not everything was fantastic. Well, there were a couple of things that were just off. Uh, namely, the shrimp was overcooked, which yeah. is kind of a bummer. Peel and eat shrimp is 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 a, is a draw. Um, Tiana's gumbo just not not. It wasn't no. great. No, I don't know. I'm glad I talked to her about it before I tried. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, look, I'm not from New Orleans, but I have had gumbo in New Orleans. I have had a chef from New Orleans make gumbo, and this was not New Orleans gumbo. This is yeah. this was gravy. Um, it was very, very salty. All that to say, most everything else was either yeah. good or great. The prime rib was, was I won't say excellent, but it was very good prime rib cooked. The I mean, curry uh, chicken was too, yeah. The mashed potatoes were so good. That was so good. Mm, so good. <laughs> and all the salads were delicious. I mean, there was this kale salad that we're gonna figure out how to make that here at home because it was Wonderful, a broccoli slaw, uh, the the regular traditional, you made a, like a kind of just make your own salad, but there was lots of toppings and stuff. Um, just that, that piece of it was very nice as well. Anyway, so all that to say, we gave food a four as well. So, I mean, just a really nice selection. There were some things that weren't like necessarily the best, but there were lots of things that did shine a little bit. So, you know, it kind of all evens out. All that to say, you add it all up and divide it out. We gave it a four overall. This is not a place that I would come a lot. I mean, for the two of us, it was $165. Again, they're not doing discounts. We did not get any adult beverages or anything like that. That's just 
two buffets. $165 is kind of a lot for that's dinner, lot. like especially when it's a buffet. But on the flip side, if you're using the dining plan, that's a good value. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't, if you're paying cash, but um, you 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 want everyone to have options because there's a lot of great options. I mean, the kids' pizza, the kids' chicken oh, nuggets. Those we tried chicken those. Chicken nuggets were really they were good. Great. And characters mm -hmm. because a portion of this meal cost at least probably $20 a head is oh, sure. just for the character experience, right? And so I think I think it's worth it to me for Disney dollars. Like the make, <laughs> make, make believe pretend money in make the real believe. world does not exist on Disney property dollars. <laughs> I think it's worth it. I'm glad it came once. I would recommend if it's like a one and done thing, you've never been or you haven't been in five years since, you know, before COVID, then yeah, try it. I think it's definitely a great option for character dining experience outside of the theme park. So if you are wanting a character dining experience on your off day, um, that is different from the you know, Fab Five and like the classic characters, I think that this is a really great choice. All right, if you are liking these videos, please hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss the next one. We will see you on the next video.